During Tuesday's night vice presidential debate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence shined a spotlight directly on former Virginia Governor Tim Kaine's extreme abortion position. Pence said he could not understand, quote, with Hillary Clinton and now Senator Kaine at her side, why they would support a practice like partial birth abortion. The very idea that a child is almost born into the world could still have their life taken from them is just anathema to me. Kaine maintained that, quote, we really feel like you should live fully and with enthusiasm the commands of your faith. But it is not the role of the public servant to mandate that for everybody else. First off, that isn't even accurate. Kane stands with a candidate who has said that millions of Americans must change their religious persuasions in order to encompass her view that men can become women and women can become men and gay people can marry each other. But beyond that, pro-life does not require religious belief. It requires scientific belief. Unborn children are still children. Kane didn't acknowledge that. Instead, he said he supported Roe v. Wade, which he mischaracterized as allowing, quote, American women to consult their own conscience. That's not what Roe does. It allows American women to define someone else's life, their baby's life, as non-life for whatever reason they choose. Of course, Kane also now says he wants to reject the so-called Hyde Amendment, which makes it, which, which says that uh, federal funding isn't necessary for abortion, which means that it isn't just women making decisions for their babies, it's not subsidizing those decisions. So the whole let's agree to disagree thing doesn't even apply. Then, most disgustingly, the Catholic Kane quoted the Gospel of Matthew to tear into Donald Trump's nutty declaration months ago women should be prosecuted for abortion. Now, Trump was wrong on that. But Cain quoting the New Testament in order to defend the killing of the unborn isn't merely disgusting. It's blasphemous. It's taking the name of God in vain if you're a religious Christian. But Cain continued along those lines. He said, quote, that's what we ought to be doing in public life, living our lives of faith or motivation with enthusiasm and excitement, convincing over, dialoguing with each other about important moral issues of the day. But on fundamental issues of morality, we should let women make their own decisions. Except that, as a society, we don't do that on fundamental issues of morality. Women don't get to commit murder because they decide to do so. Women can't hold slaves. Women can't redefine away inconvenient humans simply because they have, quote, different moral judgments. By relegating the status of fellow human beings to the do-what-you-feel category of government, Kane undermines any concept of a government worth defending. No government that refuses to defend human life is worthy of existence. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. <laughs> Ah, here we are. It is a brand new Jewish year, and we started the year off right with a vice presidential debate. Oh, God. See, at least the Christians do it right. They, they hit January 1st. It's a brand new year. Everybody sort of takes one extra day. They, they have fun. We do our, our brand new year. We come back and we watch Mike Pence and, and Tim Kaine debate about who's the whiter guy. Okay, so before we get any further, uh, Birch Gold, obviously one of our sponsors, and uh, they do a wonderful job. If you're interested in investing in precious metals, then you need to talk with our friends at Birch Gold Group. They can be reached at birchgold.com, B-I-R-C-H gold.com slash Ben. Their number is 800 496 66 63. And that's if you want to invest in precious metals, if you're looking at the economy and it just doesn't seem stable to you, you can legally move your IRA or 401k out of risky stocks and bonds into the precious metals IRA. Get all the information, ask all your questions. They'll send you a comprehensive 16-page kit revealing how precious metals can help protect your savings. Everybody's savings should at least be a little bit precious metals. Mine is, and Birch Gold Group is the group that I would choose to invest with precious metals. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Again, birchgold.com slash Ben, 800-496-6663. Don't put all of your money, obviously, in precious metals, but put some of it in there. And if you're going to do so, talk to my friends at birchgold.com slash Ben. Make sure that you use the slash Ben so they know that we sent you. All righty. So, last night, the huge long-awaited vice presidential debate. Okay, so no one was awaiting it, and it was not huge, and vice presidential debates make no difference, but for the sake of this show, we're going to pretend they do. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> the vice presidential debates, just to be historically accurate, they don't really do anything. T Tim Kaine, Mike Pence fighting it out. When's the last time a VP debate mattered? Well, everyone likes to cite Lloyd Benson and Dan Quayle. Lloyd Benson, of course, dropped that famous line on Dan Quayle in the 1988 vice presidential debate, where Quayle said, yeah, he's really young, but JFK, Jack Kennedy was really young. And Lloyd Benson said, Senator, I knew Jack Kennedy. You're no Jack Kennedy, right? And everybody goes, oh, my God, he's not Jack Kennedy, and which is probably true. He wasn't doing LSD in the White House and screwing interns. But aside from that, it was this big, you know, everybody went crazy. How, oh, wow, Lloyd Benson, what a great one. Okay. Except that Lloyd Benson's candidate, Michael Dukakis, went on to lose 40 states. So VP debates don't matter very much. But maybe this one will matter because 
Donald Trump has really hit the skids. Donald Trump, his campaign is in a lot of trouble. He spent the last week and a half being an idiot. He reverted to type. That was always the big question here was, was Donald Trump going to revert to type? And the polls are showing that that's had a pretty significant impact on his campaign. There are two separate polls out that now show that he's, he's trailing in Ohio, which is not good. According to the, the YouGov poll, there's a new YouGov poll, they show nationally she's up four, but in the state she's killing him. She's up five in Michigan, five in Colorado, four in New Hampshire, three in Wisconsin, two in North Carolina, two in Florida, two in Pennsylvania, two in Nevada, one in Iowa, which was supposed to be a blowout state for him, one in Ohio, tied in Georgia. If that is anything like reality, Donald Trump has a serious problem on his hands. He has a pretty major problem on his hands. So he needed something to shift the debate away from the latest stupid thing that he decided to tweet. And, uh, and the debate, I think, provides him that opening, because Mike Pence did what Donald Trump couldn't. He actually debated really well. Tim Kaine absolutely collapsed. The former governor of Virginia just looked awful all the way through. He looked like garbage. He couldn't stop interrupting Donald Trump. Now, I'm old enough to remember. I'm old enough to remember when somebody interrupting a, a moderator or interrupting a fellow candidate a lot of times, that was mansplaining. That was sexism. When Tim Kaine does it to Mike Pence or to the moderator, then it's totally fine because he's a Democrat. Here is in a montage of Tim Kaine not shutting his pie hole. He's employed tens of thousands of people in this country. And, and paid a few taxes and lost a, a billion a dollars reputation. a year. The newly, newly emboldened the aggression of Russia, whether it was in uh, Ukraine or now you, their heavy-handed approach. She, she had a Clinton Foundation accepting contributions from foreign governments. You, and you foreign are Donald Trump, uh, Trump supremacist. Instead of Hillary Clinton expanding the Syrian Or instead of program. you violating the Constitution. But we can't know for certain who these people are coming from yes, Syria. Yes, And, Syria, and we don't let them know. We don't let them in. This Senator, I think, the, uh, I think I'm still on my time. Well, I think, our, isn't this a discussion? This is our yeah. open discussion. Let, let's talk well, about... This is Badger, let me, Tim Kaine, not, not, let me interrupt not performing you. well. Okay, so hyperactive Badger, Tim Kaine, not performing well. I thought, by the way, the funniest tweet last night was somebody tweeted a picture of Mike Pence, and they said, Eminem really looks terrible. <laughs> so, uh, Mike Pence uh, did a much better job. Mike Pence is very smooth. Mike Pence is a former radio host, so he knows how to do this. Tim Kaine looked hot and bothered the entire debate. He looked uh, a little unhinged. He looked angry the entire time. We're going to go through the debate. There, there are two things that are worth noting. One, well, there are really three. One... Mike Pence is a normal conservative politician, and he wiped the floor with Tim Kaine, wiped the floor with him. So all these Trump fans, people who are ardent Trump supporters in the primaries, they were sitting around during this debate going, this is great. Look what this conservative, normal conservative politician can do. And the rest of us were like, right, we know, we were there. You picked Trump, right? There are a bunch of normal conservative politicians in the primaries. Instead, we got the one guy who could make Hillary Clinton look stable and composed. Okay, that's, that's number one. Number two, Mike Pence uh, did a great job during this debate of redirecting. So every time he was attacked about Trump, he immediately redirected to Hillary Clinton. We're going to show a lot of examples of that. This is what Trump should be doing in the debate on Sunday. So this should provide some sort of roadmap for what Trump needs to do uh, in the second debate on Sunday. We'll talk about what he needs to do in the second debate on Sunday. Third point to make about all of this, and this is the one that, that did bother me, and that is, yes, Mike Pence won the debate. Of course, Mike Pence won the debate. He, he was his, his points about Hillary Clinton were all exactly correct. Uh, his 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 avoiding kind of defending the stupider comments that Donald Trump has made, that was smart. But he did what I like to call construction of fantasy Trump. And this is something that a lot of people who I respect have been doing, uh, and I, I find it just absolutely obnoxious. Every time Tim Kaine would say something true about Donald Trump, it wasn't just that, Kaine, that, that, that Mike Pence would swivel from it to another topic. Instead, what Mike Pence would do is pretend that it never happened, like Donald Trump didn't exist. According to Mike Pence, it's good news for me. According to Mike Pence, Donald Trump has never existed. It's all been a figment of our imagination. All the terrible things Donald Trump said during the primary season, they just went away. They never happened at all. And you must be crazy if you thought that they were real. They weren't real. How dare you? And he, he's great at it. He does the kind of tut-tutting. Every so often, you'll see Mike Pence just to shake his head like, I can't believe this guy came. I can't believe what this guy Kane is saying that Donald Trump has done. And it's like, uh, uh, we have him on tape doing it, but that, that's, that's the routine. And since this is a, a non-truth election, since truth has no bearing on this election whatsoever, the person who lied better about their candidate last night did better, and that was, and that was Pence. This construction of fantasy Trump is one of the things that drives me nuts because it actually prevents the consolidation of the conservative movement. 
Like, I understand, I, for the one millionth time now, I think we have a running count, the one millionth time, celebration, we hit one million, the one millionth time during this election cycle, I totally understand voting for Trump to stop Hillary Clinton. What I do not understand is lying for Trump to stop Hillary Clinton, because I wouldn't lie for members of my own family. And I'm not going to sell out my basic moral principles in order to fib about a guy who I think is, is kind of a, a crap heap. But... You know, there are people who feel the necessity to create this fantasy Trump. So there are people who I, I think are really smart who do things like they say, well, if Donald Trump would just talk in detail about Egypt or Russia or Syria or about Obamacare, and then you say, right, but he's not going to because he doesn't have the capacity to do that. And they say, right, but he could. Why don't you support him? You need to support him. And it's like, right, but, but the guy who you say exists doesn't exist. And the guy who does exist, you say doesn't exist. They, they've created this fantasy, this kind of blow up doll of Trump. And then they say, well, this blow-up doll is real. And if you say, no, that's not, that's just a blow-up doll. Trump is, is real. You can still say he's there and he's bad, but you're going to vote for him anyway. But don't tell me the blow-up doll is Trump. And they say, no, the blow-up doll is Trump. And if you refuse to acknowledge that this blow-up doll is Trump, you're helping Hillary. Say, well, no, gang. No, I'm not. He is by not being a better candidate. Okay, so you'll see Mike Pence did some of that. So we'll jump right in. Tim Kaine let off. He started talking about Hillary Clinton and why he's so happy to be at the debate. This is a very special place. 65 years ago, a young, courageous woman, Barbara Johns, led a uh, walkout of her high school, Moton High School. She made history by protesting school segregation. She believed our nation was stronger together. And that walkout led to the Brown versus Board of Education decision that moved us down the path toward equality. I am so proud to be running with another strong history-making woman, Hillary Clinton, to be president of the United States. Okay, Hillary Clinton has nothing to do with that lady. Nothing. So he's, he's immediately citing some other woman, and then he's going, but they both have vaginas. That's why you need to vote for Hillary. Okay, very weak opener. And then he continues. He, he's asked why we should trust Hillary Clinton, and his answer is not good. We trust Hillary Clinton, my wife and I, and we trust her with the most important thing in our life. We have a son deployed overseas in the Marine Corps right now. We trust Hillary Clinton as president and commander in chief. But the thought of Donald Trump as commander in chief scares us to death. OK, both by the way, both Pence and Kane have kids in the military. When Kane says that he trusts Hillary with his son, he just better hope that his son doesn't get stuck in an embassy in the middle of the night in a country that Hillary invaded and then forgot to care about because it was politically inconvenient. Pence started this way. He started by, by thanking Donald Trump. I also want to thank Donald Trump uh, for making that call and inviting us to be a part of this ticket. I have to tell you, I'm a, I'm a small town boy from a place not too different from Farmville. I grew up with a cornfield in my backyard. My, my grandfather had immigrated to this country when he was about my son's age. My mom and dad built a, everything that matters in a small town in southern Indiana. They built a family and a, and a good name and a business, and, and they raised a family. And I, I dream someday of representing my hometown in Washington, D.C., but I, I honestly, Elaine, I never imagined, never imagined I'd have the opportunity to be governor of the state that I love, let alone be sitting at a table like this in this kind of a position. Okay, so he's so he so Pence obviously is better at this. He's a better speaker. He addresses direct to camera sometimes because he knows that the real audience is out there. Uh, now, uh, forgive me, I have my own you know, predilections when it comes to candidates. I, I find Pence just personally kind of smarmy. Like, I look at Kane and Kane drives me nuts because Kane is obviously just out there like he's he's hyperactive. Pence's kind of soft spoken smarminess hits me the wrong way, the same way that some for some for a lot of people, Ted Cruz is kind of smarmy approach hit them the wrong way. It hits me that way with Pence, too, and I can't, I can't lie about that, but he's doing a much better job on any objective level. And then Kane keeps, Kane keeps coming back to, here's why you should trust Hillary Clinton, and it keeps being a giant fail. Here's Kane doing that again. Elaine, let me tell you why I trust Hillary Clinton. Here's what people should look at as they look at a public servant. Do they have a passion in their life that showed up before they were in public life, and have they held on to that passion throughout their life, regardless of whether they were in office or not, succeeding or failing? Hillary Clinton has that passion. Okay, so, so we're supposed to trust Hillary because she has a passion for public life by turning public life into a giant coffer for her, <laughs> just a giant piggy bank for her. Very, very weak answer on that. Here's Kane on Donald Trump. Donald Trump always puts himself first. He built a business career, uh, in the words of one of his own campaign staffers, off the backs of the little guy. And as a candidate, he started his campaign with a speech where he called Mexicans rapists and criminals, and he has pursued the 
discredited and really outrageous lie that President Obama wasn't born in the United States. It is so painful to suggest that we go back to think about these days where an African-American could not be a citizen of the United States. And I can't imagine how Governor Pence can defend the insult-driven, selfish, me-first style of Donald Trump. Okay, so what he's saying is partially true, right? It's not, he didn't say all Mexicans are rapists and criminals, but what he's saying about Trump and birtherism and all this stuff, some of that's true. Look at Pence's expression. Look what Pence is doing. He knows he's on split screen, and he looks like he's, he just can't wait to jump in, right? He's doing kind of the smirk. Like, I, the, what kind of BS is this guy spouting? And as you're watching the split screen, if you don't know any better, you assume that Kane is not telling the truth, because who would say such outrageous things? Who would do such outrageous things? This was the fantasy Trump that Mike Pence did a wonderful job of creating last night, this magical Trump who didn't actually exist in reality. And he, he continued along these lines. The, the moderator, who's awful, Quijano, uh, Elaine Quijano, she, she asked Trump about, about uh, asked Pence about Trump's personality, and here's Pence's answer. Governor Pence, let me ask you, you have said Donald Trump is, quote, thoughtful, compassionate, and steady. Yet 67% of voters feel he is a risky choice, and 65% feel he does not have the right kind of temperament to be president. Why do so many Americans think Mr. Trump is simply too erratic? Well, let me, let me say first and foremost that uh, uh, Senator, you and Hillary Clinton would know a lot about an insult-driven campaign. It really is remarkable. At a, at a time when literally, in, in the wake of Hillary Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State, where she was the architect of the Obama administration's foreign policy, we see entire portions of the world, particularly the wider Middle East, literally spinning out of control. I mean, the situation we're watching hour by hour in Syria today is, is a result of the failed foreign policy and the weak foreign policy that Hillary Clinton helped lead in this administration and create. Okay, so look at Kane. Kane looks pissed, right? Kane looks angry. He looks sullen. He looks annoyed by what by what Pence is saying. Now, notice Pence didn't even remotely come close to answering the question, right? The question was, why do you think that Trump isn't erratic? And his answer was, Hillary Clinton's foreign policy is garbage. This is what Pence is, do, is smart at. Every every time he was asked about Trump, he redirected over to Hillary Clinton. Very very smart. If, if Trump does the same thing on Sunday, he'll be in much better shape. Now, we got to take a quick break here and say hello to our friends over at Ring. So this morning, actually, this morning, uh, I got a notice on my phone that somebody was ringing our doorbell at 6 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and I got the notice on my phone because we have Ring. Uh, we have the Ring of Security Kit. We have Ring.com. And... Uh, and it's fantastic. I was able to immediately step out of the meeting that I was in and hit it and see who was at the front door, make sure there was somebody safe. That's what Ring does. Most home burglaries happen after somebody hits the ring and it hits the hits the doorbell, and then they realize nobody's home, and then they burgle your house. What this does, number one, it allows you to see who's there. Number two, it allows you to mimic as though you're actually home because you can talk to the person, so they'll leave you alone. And, and number three, it gives you a feeling of security knowing that you're always covered. So you can get this, this Ring of Security kit, which is really great. It's a radio, r Ring video doorbell for the front door and a stick up cam which is a wireless weatherproof hd camera which keeps an eye on the other parts of your property and they install in minutes they're very easy to install i've done it myself uh, it's helped us a lot obviously my wife tends to uh, uh, you know i'm a high relatively high profile guy which means that there's we're, we're constantly afraid of creepy people coming with a big security system uh, at our house plus a shotgun and ring is part of that security system for sure uh, right now if you go to ring.com slash ben you can get 150 dollars off a ring of security kit which is a really great deal 150 bucks off the ring of security kit ring.com slash ben make sure you use slash Ben so they know that we sent you uh, and it is a great product I mean it's it's a product that I swear by my wife loves it ring is uh, it's so good that we get free products from ring we actually went out and bought extra products ourselves we spent our own money on it because we're we believe in the product so much it's ring.com slash Ben if you want to participate in that so Mike Pence is trying desperately to avoid being connected with Donald Trump and Tim Kaine's entire shtick last night was to try and connect Mike Pence with Donald Trump. So here is the key line for, for Tim Kaine right here. This is true. This is his key line. You, you are Donald Trump, uh, Trump's apprentice. Uh, oh. let, let me talk about this. Senator, issue I think, the, I, I think OK, so he says you're Donald Trump's apprentice. The problem is, of course, Kaine's delivery is awful. He should say that seriously. He should say, you know, Mike, you're Donald Trump's apprentice. You've humiliated yourself on behalf of Donald Trump. And for an honorable, upstanding guy like you to do that is really something. Right? I mean, you should have dropped the hammer on him. Kaine can't do it. But. One of the questions from this debate is going to be, is going to be, yes, Pence won the debate walking away. He, was, he appeared more serious. Kane appeared frivolous, and we'll, we have plenty more to go through here. We'll talk about it. But, but did Kane do damage to Trump? Pence was attacking Kane and Hillary. He may have done damage to Kane. 
Cain was attacking not Pence, really. He was attacking Trump. He brought up every comment Trump has ever made that was bad. Now, Cain looks uncomfortable in the role of attack dog. He doesn't look like he's capable of doing it well. But if you actually hear what Cain is saying and you're just a, a normal voter, does this make you feel more secure with Trump? It might make you feel more secure with Pence. Does it make you feel more secure with Trump? I don't think it goes that far because I don't think VP candidates ever really make you feel that much more secure. Okay, we got to let you go now. You got a little extra time here. Um, but if you go to dailywire.com, become a subscriber right now, $8 a month. You go to Daily Wire, you can watch the show live. We can continue uh, after, after this break. Plus, you become a subscriber, and that means that you can participate in our mailbag. We do a live mailbag tomorrow. In a couple of weeks, um, you're going to get some special benefits, too. So dailywire.com is the place to be, 8 bucks a month to become a subscriber uh, at dailywire.com. And we are the largest and most prominent conservative podcast in America.